Hello my friends, welcome back again. Uh, just something small I wanted to show you. Um, a small tutorial today. I want to add something to this. This is my painting which I finished in my previous tutorial. Um, it's looking very nice. It's framed. Um, I think it's very eye-catching. It really is. The, the light and dark colours, they really kind of catch your eye, don't they? With the splash of orange in the painting. There's just something else I want to do. And I thought this might make a nice little lesson for you if you ever wanted to add something to your paintings, if it's a still life like this. What I'm thinking is adding another orange here with some peel coming off of it. Some peel coming across the canvas like this, just to kind of add a bit more interest into the painting. I think it would make a big difference. And it's just with these two halves of the orange here, it just does something about the composition, which I, I, I keep looking at the painting and the composition for me, it's, it's not bad, but I think it's mix, missing something. I think having a third object on this side would balance the painting a bit better. Um, just another orange, we'll say here, and a bit of peel coming off of the orange going across like this. Just a little swirl of a peel, you know, something like that. I think it would make a big difference. Um, I, it's something I want, I, I want to do it the more I look at the painting, the more I want to do it. So I think it's going to help. Um, and possibly, possibly, I'm not sure if it might distract the painting too much, but possibly a single flower coming out and falling down like this out of the vase. Perhaps something like that, but I'm still not sure which colour to use for the flower. Um, I'm thinking maybe something with a rich red or a pink, perhaps something a bit of pink or maybe even something with some blue or purple. on Maybe a purple flower on the vase actually would complement the colours nicely. So I'm thinking about something. Now, this is something I might decide to do as I'm going along um, in this tutorial. So I wanted to add something else here. I think it would look better and it would just add a bit more interest and maybe even one or two bits of orange peel here and there. Just one or two of them, perhaps, I'm not sure yet. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do one orange here with some peel coming off. I think you'll like it. And it might teach you how to add something to a painting um, from various photographs, combine them together to make a composition. So, yes, join me. Let's have a bit of fun with this and see what we can come up with. I um, I think it's going to be quite nice. Yeah, let's try it. Come on, let's let's have a go and see what we what we can do. Okay, here we go, my friends. Let's try something on this. There's a reference photograph. I thought that would make a nice little addition. You will notice the light is coming from the wrong side on the photograph, isn't it? So I'm going to have to improvise along the way because the light is coming from the left, isn't it, on this painting? So we'll improvise, make the light coming from the left instead of the right. So I think that's going to be nice. Maybe just around here like this. Um, coming across. I think it's going to make it really nice. Look, what we do is we get a small pointy brush and just sketch in what we're painting. Let's just mix a bit of orange first. Look, a little bit of cadmium red. Nice and thin, nice and watery. Just so we have an idea. It's good to have an idea of what you're doing, where you're doing it, okay? So just take some orange. Let's split these up and make them into three. I think would be a good idea. So if I go up into this slightly i'm going to basically paint another circle okay another circle again it this look this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect okay this is all just very rushed and very very rough you know what i mean um trying to get the size right will be the most difficult part because i don't want to be putting a small orange next to two big oranges so i'm gonna to have to really improvise now on this make it nice and big Nice big orange, there we go, and a little bit more thinners. Let's create the orange peel, okay? It kind of comes across like that, all right? I'm going to actually go down like this, and then in like that, and then I'm going to come around and around like that. That's the big piece. Then the next piece, it almost continues on straight, doesn't it? And it comes down like that and it comes up like so and the last piece i would say underneath here give it a little bit of a wiggle 
That will do. I think that will do. Maybe another little piece like that. And I think that's all right, you know. Um, look, again, I don't like making things too complicated. I really don't. But I think that will do. Something like that just to add to the painting. Let's go and get a small brush. And this painting is dry, almost dry. Some of the shadows are still quite wet. The orange is fairly dry. It's just some of the shadowed areas are still fairly not wet, but they're a little bit damp. So I must be careful with the shadowed areas. What I'm going to do actually is, you see this shadow in where the orange is? I'm going to take that off with my brush, look. Some thinners on my brush. I'm going to scrape that off, get rid of that. That will make life much easier, won't it? Let's take it out. And you can use little bits of tissue as well. Get a little bit of tissue and just scrape it out. Now, won't that make life much easier for us when we're trying to paint a nice bright orange colour on there without picking up the dark colours and making an almighty mess? Won't that make life much easier? There. Okay? Done. I'm going to mix a nice medium orange. I'll take some cadmium red, lots and lots of yellow, and I'm going quite thick with this now. Not too thick, but quite thick. Thick enough to cover, and a bit of Naples yellow as well. So... I want to be able to cover that canvas really nicely. Let's just put in our colour. And you can see what's going to happen is it's going to mix with the kind of that little bit of shadow that's left, that dark colour. It's going to mix with that and go muddy. But don't worry. This is early stages. This is absolutely fine. And we can add more to this later. More cadmium red, more cadmium yellow. I'm just using thick paint on its own now at this stage. And I'm going to put that in, paint in my orange. So this is something, this is quite interesting, you know, because when you paint a subject, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be finished. Even if you're happy enough with the subject, you can still come along later and say to yourself, hmm, I might like to add another little bit of that in there, or so-and-so, you know, it's... It's never completely finished, really. So that's one nice part about painting is a painting never needs to be absolutely finished. That's why I like painting so much. Um, you can just add so many different things to it as you're going. I'm going to paint in the peel using a nice rich orange, okay? A nice rich ready kind of an orange. A deep dark orange, maybe a touch of Naples yellow just to make that more opaque and that will help it cover a bit better. So let's just go like this, okay? I'm just going to paint this in. And this is still kind of mixing slightly with the white underneath. What's happening is the white is kind of almost dry. But as soon as I add a little bit of paint on top of the white, it softens the white again. So it makes it wet again. That's the, the thing with oils. So you could, I, I should really have left this dry for two or three weeks before doing this, but it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Now I go in under here, there's this little wiggly bit in underneath. This will all be a kind of a shadowed part in the end. And create the impression of another little peel just up there somewhere, somewhere. Let's just go with the floor. I'm going to go with the floor today. Um, right. So, I need more yellow. I've gone through a lot of yellow already, haven't I? Let's start darkening and adding the skin on the left-hand side. I want to get a smaller brush. So, I'm going for a smaller, little flat brush. Just to add that skin onto one side of that. Let me see. Now, I have a nice new little brush here, look. Or a small stubby brush will do fine as well. I'm going to mix a dark colour. Cadmium red and burnt cyanide. And a little touch of yellow. That will make it like a browny, browny kind of an orange. Okay. I'm going to start putting the skin around here. Like that. So this will be just a piece of skin that's left on the orange, let's say. I'll take a touch of black into that and go nice and dark um, just down the bottom because 
you do want a little bit of a gradient on something like this i know the light is coming from this side but i still do want a little bit of a kind of a gradient going down where it's kind of going underneath so just a little bit of darkness down under there just soften a little bit through okay just like that and the interesting part will be the main body of the orange so what we have is if i sketch it for you it might make more sense i'm just looking at the photograph simply and just go okay so we have a couple of dark lines let's start with these ones here okay comes across like that and it comes over and turns doesn't it so all these lines will kind of turn from the middle out you see and that's just giving us the impression of the curvature of the orange and then what i'm going to do is just start lightening some parts of that i'm going to get naples yellow and cadmium yellow i think those two on their own will be enough maybe a touch of orange there look just a tiniest touch of orange but you want a very bright yellowy color and i'm just going to start lightening these so you see i'm slowly lightening the colors And this is what I like to call the filling in stage. Okay. Now, as it turns, comes down, it's going to start getting darker, so they're going to see less and less light. So I'm only really kind of catching little bits of light on these sides up here. Okay. Now I'll clean my brush again, and I'm then going to start darkening. So again, a nice rich dark orange. Let's get some cadmium red, burnt sienna, and lots of yellow. We want a nice rich rich orange okay lots of thick paint i'm using thick paint from here on because i already have a layer on my canvas already so from here on now it's just going to be nice thick thick paint and i'm just going to start darkening this side and you may say to yourself you need more yellow you can add a little bit more yellow in if you like so you can just kind of see the way i'm just darkening the back side of the orange. A bit more yellow there, look. So what I'm having to do now is imagine that photograph in reverse. So that can be quite tricky, trying to imagine the shadows on the opposite side of a photograph, especially when you only have a photograph to look at. You have to try and imagine what is it going to look like if the shadows were on the opposite side of this photograph. So I'm kind of having to improvise a little bit, do you understand? So I'm just going to soften it back in here a little bit more, maybe add a little touch of darkness just up here. I want a nice kind of a transition really from light to dark. Okay, then I'll take a tiny bit of the Born Sienna, perhaps with some cadmium red. And just down here, go nice and dark. Let's go nice and dark down here. Remember, we want nice, strong, shadowed areas as well. That makes it jump from the canvas. And that's what really kind of catches your eye in a lot of paintings, um, is the shadows. It's the shadows, really, that people kind of are drawn to. A little bit there, and it just kind of lightens out the turns again okay so we're kind of very we're still in the very early stages now of this just this is going to take a while but we're going to have some fun let's get some cadmium red and some burnt sienna again touch tiny touch of black and i'm going to darken in under here give it a nice wiggle This is all the rough work now that I'm doing with my brush, okay, with the bigger brush. I leave kind of final details really till the very end with my pointy brush. That's kind of the way I like to work, you know. I like to fill in the bulk of the area with this kind of a brush. Even if I'm going into small detailed areas like this here, I still like to use this brush to fill it in. Because it prevents you from spending too much time and paying too much attention to 
a lot of the areas, if you understand what I mean. So I, I like to use this wider brush for kind of filling in and then just go to the pointy brush for my little details and stuff like that in the end. It's, it's just, it's a nice balance, I think. Now I'll get some Naples yellow and some white. And just popping a little bit of that. Remember, the light is coming from the left, so I'm just going to add light from the top left corners of all of this. Now there is one piece which you will find tricky with something like this, and that's the center piece there. Okay, there's going to be a slight shadow cast on this side from the orange itself. So it's going to be slightly darker, then it's going to go kind of light, sort of in the middle. Like this, okay. And then turning it slightly to it, to show that it's kind of twisting. You see what I mean? So if you do that with all your curves, so to speak, that will give you the impression of um, a curvature. So if I do it here, for example, you see the way now that automatically kind of tells you that it has a curve on it. It's all about really how you use your brush. That's that's the, that's the important thing with painting. It's you know. It comes down to technique, I think, at the end of the day. Um, a lot of people say to you, no, you know, you either have it or you don't have it, or it's a gift, or you're born with it, or anything like that. I don't think so. If you can learn just to have, the, just learn the technique, you can do anything just like anybody else. It's like with everything else. You know, practice makes perfect. And if you take your time, and learn and you know, experiment with different things, it will, it will come to you in the end and you will, it's all about learning, isn't it? Now I'm going to darken certain areas of this. So I'm just going to go and take a dark area, or dark colour, sorry, and I'm just going to add a little bit of shade. Let's say down underneath. So, just want to show a little bit of shading on this side. I want to soften it up. And you may not notice a lot of this right now, but later when the painting is finished, you're going to kind of look at it and say, oh yeah, there's that little shadow that we painted earlier. Now I can see it. Now it makes sense. So that's what a lot of painting is. It's when you finish and you stand back and look then you think to yourself aha now it makes sense now i see what he was doing it for you know and that's why i just love i just love painting really so so much okay i'm being careful now i'm just being very careful um i don't want to overdo my paint because remember if you put too much on too soon you can begin to lose the effect that you were trying to get in the first place. So I'm just being a little bit careful. I think I might move now to a small brush. I'll go back to my small only brush here. And again, once the shadows are done, this will all make sense again. So I'm now going to start adding some nice highlights to all of this. Let's go. Let's get some Naples yellow with some of this orange. So I'm going for a very kind of a bright, it's a bright colour. And I'm going to go up here and pop that in. Like so. And again, I'm being just slightly careful. Maybe some yellow and some white as well. We could try chance some of that, couldn't we? I'm going to go with a nice jaggedy colour just around the front of the skin here, okay? It's a nice jaggedy line. And these, all these little details now will start kind of making sense very soon. I'm going to go around the edge up here just to show a little bit of lightness just up there. 
and it's blending in with the black just up on top there which is quite annoying but i'm going to put some thick color just over that then it's time to start kind of adding uh, some darks so i'll take cadmium yellow cadmium red and let's just kind of start adding a few darker shades here and there you see when you're doing something like this it's all about taking your time and as i say in most of my tutorials don't try and finish all of this with every single brush stroke that you're pulling on you know don't say i put a brush stroke on now it's finished you will keep coming back to a lot of this that's what it's all about really you know you're going to keep coming back and i know i've kind of probably painted over a lot of what i've painted earlier on i've painted over a lot of it but it's because you're you're looking back and you're saying mm, maybe it needs to be a bit darker or a bit brighter and it's all about adding subtle little changes be very very subtle in what you're doing so i'm going to darken down here now look add a bit of darker color down there there's some cadmium red and some black go for a dark color i'm going to start adding little touches of very dark shadows just around the end and the feeling of the orange inside the peel is it's a very sort of a random effect i find um it's a, a difficult one to replicate i would say if i was sitting here now for three hours i might be able to replicate that effect of the, the orange inside the peel that effect but i'm not really too worried about getting this looking exactly like an orange i'm really not it's just an impression really i'm after that's all i'm trying to achieve a nice little impression of the peel coming across now i'm going to go up here and darken inside this as well and i'm going to soften it down a little bit because a lot of what you'll see in this type of a subject is slight little gradients of color so what a lot of artists do is they just add a little dark and then they just soften it down very very gently look you see they just kind of put a bit on and they dab it and just soften it down very gently like so so that's giving you the impression nice impression isn't it At the same time i'm thinking i need to keep the colors very similar okay because what i don't want is one orange which is completely different to the other two i need to keep the colors and the hues kind of very close and that helps when you're using the very same color palette so let's get some red and some cadmium yellow again so I'm just kind of mixing up nice rich colours now and just adding, adding as I go. Um, I'm going to go over a nice rich orange down here. And I'm going to just soften it and again follow the curves. Now to create that kind of stippled effect of an orange peel, I'm just kind of dabbing it, you see. I'm dabbing it and bringing it around. I just want to get that kind of stippled feeling you know that kind of orange peel effect just want to get that just dabbing it very gently following the shape i will leave all my lace till the very end the light colors i'm just kind of focusing now on getting some nice rich vibrant kind of colors in all of this i'm going to do the same here i'm going to get my rich orange color look i'm just going to dab 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 you could basically just dab a lot of dots onto this that's what you could actually do if you want so you could just dab light dots and dark dots and that would give you 
that impression. Okay, we could look, we could, there's no reason why we can't. I'm going to get some light colour, cadmium yellow, maple yellow and a little white. And I'm going to start adding some highlights to this. If you see this area, we have the light again coming from the right hand side on the photograph. But it's coming from the left, isn't it? So I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to start adding it from the left. Lots of little dots. Okay, and then I'll just let that disappear into the darker colours. I'll do the same up here. Let that disappear down into the darker colours. And the same here. I'm going to catch a nice little highlight right kind of in the middle of this and it's just about softening the most important part of oil painting for me is just softening colors okay making colors nice and soft that for me is a very important part of painting with oils Because a lot of the effects you create with oil painting is down to softening, softening colours together. You know? Um, the painting itself can be quite simple, but getting the effect of softening colours together is probably the challenging part for a lot of beginners. You can use your finger. That's the best tool in the box. Tip of the finger like that. Dab, dab, dab. They're just creating that texture. That's all they're doing. And I'm going to put some over here. Okay. Just like that. Again, the light is coming from the left. So we're going from the left. And let that just disappear down. Okay. We are getting there slowly. I think I need to work on the orange, the actual orange itself, and get those kind of highlighted areas. And try and get some shape in there as well. That's very important. Try and get some shape. So I'm going to just start out here. And I don't think there's any real particular technique for doing this part of the orange. I think it's a lot of experimenting really. So I'm just going to kind of, it's very sort of rough, isn't it? It's very difficult to paint this type of an orange surface, if you understand it, you know, the surface of an orange once it's peeled. It's quite a difficult kind of thing to paint. So I'm just looking at the photograph and I'm putting in little bits here and there. You know, all that kind of soft stuff that you get on the orange once it's peeled. I, you know, that's very difficult to paint, isn't it? So what do you do? You just try to roughen up the surface and make it look like an orange, really. Just do your best. Look, just very rough areas, just dabbing the brush, swirling the brush around, all that kind of thing. I think there's probably no other way of doing this, really, other than doing it like that. I'm just going to get some orange, some rich deep red orange. I'm just going to go around the edge of this. Like so. And then I'll just refine those lines inside again using a dark colour. Let's get some cadmium yellow, cadmium red, maybe a touch of burnt sienna. Even a touch of black. And I'm just going to refine the inside pieces of all of this. I'm just going to go like that. And I'm going to go like that. Looking at the lines, looking at the way the lines go. And they may even be kind of a hit and miss as well, you know. The lines may not be completely... straight and they are kind of a hit and miss line really aren't they if you look closely you can see it's 
it's just sort of a here and there kind of effect. I'll put one there as well. And then perhaps just darken it a bit along the centre. And just leave it again, softening the colours in. Okay. Now I'm going to just soften out this skin of this orange. I think it's a bit much. I don't think it needs that much roughness, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to soften it out a little. There we go. I think that's a bit better, isn't it? I'm going to take some white with some Naples yellow. I'm going to go around the inside of that skin, like so. Just giving us that little bit. Then I'm going to again get some darker colour. I'm just kind of sorting out little dark areas now with this. That's all I'm doing. Look, little areas like this. Again, along here, under that as well. I'm going to go under that as well with some nice dark colour. I'm going to soften it away. A bit of black. You see, it's just about creating the illusion. For me, it's the illusion of detail, but there's no actual detail, if you understand. I'm just creating the illusion that there is detail in this, just by putting, you know, very little, simple, subtle lines here and there. Just little dabs, little bits and, bi little bits and pieces, if you will. A little bit of light in under this in here for the edge of the skin perhaps a little bit in there and you know we are nearly there already we actually are nearly there believe it or not If you find it's getting a little messy, you can just dab, you see? You can just kind of soften all this together and dab it with your fingers as well. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and white, and again, just add a real kind of a brightness on one side of these. Just to catch the light, really. Soften them back. If you feel you need to. Now, you can just paint this in and leave it flat if you want. You don't have to go to all this kind of technique and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to, really. Um, I'm going to just lighten in some of these. Perhaps just, again, a little bit of detail here and there on that. I'm now going to put in the shadow. It needs a shadow to sit on the ground, doesn't it? I will try to make a shadow the same as that colour over there. Little black, little phthalo blue, and some white. I don't want to go too strong with the shadow, but not too, you know, I want to be able to see it as well. Oh, a little bit of shadow just coming off of that. In under here. Like so. I'm now having to imagine this shadow. That's that's the problem. That's the difficult part. I have to now imagine where the shadow may be and how it's falling and the shape of the shadow, which is quite difficult, I'll be quite honest, trying to imagine something that's not there. I think that's quite difficult, I'll be honest. Just going to lighten it a bit. 
put a little bit around this and then just perhaps just leave it kind of flow away and disappear perhaps I don't know you see if this is if this is what the shadow would look like when it was a real photograph I can't tell because I have nothing to go by I have no photograph I have no reference so it's quite difficult now for me to tell if the shadow would like look like this so I'm just imagining would it look like this maybe maybe not but that's a gamble sometimes you just have to take isn't it sometimes you just have to try something don't you to see if it works sometimes I'm just putting white next to the shadow line just to soften it okay now how was that I think it needs a bit darker doesn't it you can see it's actually much much darker on the one above so let's go a little bit darker and perhaps you could just kind of soften it out I don't think that's too bad my friends I don't think it is now I'm still undecided about the flower in the vase is it going to be too confusing for the composition I don't know but I think a little maybe a little purple flower or something there I think might just catch the eye quite nicely but again it's impossible to say because once it's on it's difficult to change um, just in case of painting over it again but you know it's it's something you need to be careful about do we add the flower or don't we I don't know but look I think I leave this as it is I'm quite happy with this to be honest um, it's turned out a little bit nicer than I would have expected it to turn out I'm quite pleasantly surprised I think I made the right decision making it adding a little bit into it I think I did I think I did let me know what you think in the comments if you think I've made a total mess of it just say just ple please do say so if you think I've made a complete mess of it don't be shy I can take it so I'd like to know what you think I'm just softening out some of it here just so it's not so direct right I think that will do there's still a few little bits I need to do but I'm I'm fairly happy with that I was thinking a little flower would be nice I really do or maybe an orange peel here or something like that a little piece of an orange how about that I'm just being cautious I don't want to overdo the painting I really don't what time have we got how long have we been doing this 36 minutes which is not bad hmm we could put a piece of an orange peel a loose piece of orange peel I think we should try it because I like I like trying things let's put a little piece of an orange peel here look just a small piece we don't have to go absolutely crazy with this just a little piece of an orange peel just for a bit of fun come on it's only painting honestly and you should never leave the fear of ruling something prevent you from trying I think that's what a lot of people do in painting they, they have the fear that if they try something they're going to ruin the painting so they don't try it but then you're never going to know are you you're never going to know so try it it's only paint if you make a mistake you can just wipe it off with a cloth or whatever and try again 
but just try it. You know, just it's all about discovery for me. Painting is discovery. You know, you're never going to know unless you try something. So just try it. Let's get some light colors on this. A little bit of light catching it over here. Like that, and we could have some light up inside, just catching it as well. May not even look like an orange peel, but I don't care. And we'll stick a little bit of shadow off of that as well, yes? Come on, let's put a little bit of shadow coming off of this. Let's sit this down first. Put a little bit of a shadow. Coming off of this. And just sort of disappearing. Scrape it with your fingertip away, look. And how about that? I'm going to stop. Let me know what you think about the small flower on the vase. I'm just going to go up here. Maybe even go back a bit for you. How's that? I think I've added a bit more to it, don't you? I quite like it. It's just a vase. I'm just, I'm so tempted to put a little flower coming out of the vase and turning down. With a small little, maybe a purple flower head or a light blue or something. I don't know. I just thought, I don't want to ruin what I have. So let me know what you think. All right. I'm going to turn the camera. Pop that off and let's turn the camera. So, my apologies. Let me know what you think about that flower. I'm just so apprehensive i suppose um sometimes you'll be afraid of ruining something and maybe <sighs> distracting from the subject i'm just not sure but i'd love to put a flower up there a single flower coming out and turning over but maybe not maybe not i'll see what you think i'd like to hear your comments please do comment help me out help me we're here to help each other aren't we so i know that Happy painting, my friends. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. I hope you've gotten some hints and tips and a little bit of motivation and encouragement. That's, that's what I want to give you, some encouragement. So do try it. Add something in. Why not? I'll be back very soon with a tutorial. Thank you so, so much. Thank you to my patrons. You're very, very kind as well. I appreciate that. God bless and happy painting.